InfluxDB is an open source time series database developed by InfluxData. It's written in Go and optimized for fast storage and retrieval of time series data in fields such as operations monitoring, application metrics, IoT sensors, and real-time analytics. It's also a schema-less database, which means it's easy to add new measurements, tags, and fields at any time. Too long didn't read, it's a simple database that you can use to store time series data to make really cool looking graphs. Ooh, graphs. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to install InfluxDB, connect to it, create a database, and start creating your own measurements. Let's jump into the terminal and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is install InfluxDB, then we're going to connect and then create a database, attach to that database, and then create some measurements. Measurements is just another name for tables if you're familiar with other databases. But let's get going here. It's actually quite a simple procedure to get a database up and running. I'm gonna copy and paste some code here, and this is just to add the repository. I'm gonna link to my website below where you can grab this code, or you can go to the official InfluxDB website and grab it from there. So once the repository is added, you can do an apt install. So the command to do that is sudo apt-get update and then sudo apt-get install InfluxDB. So we're making sure our repositories are up to date, then we're gonna install the latest version of InfluxDB. All right, so InfluxDB has been installed. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen, and then I'm going to go sudo service InfluxDB start. And this is going to start the InfluxDB service. Now that the service has started, I can connect to Influx. So I'll do that by going Influx. And it looks like it wants me to install the client. So I'm going to copy and paste this here, and then just install the client. The client is different than the actual database. All right, so the client installation has finished. We can type influx and that will connect us right to the shell. Now that we're in InfluxDB, let's go over the database commands. So the first one you should know is show databases. And this shows you all the databases that are in InfluxDB. By default, you'll have this one called internal and nothing else. So the next thing we want to do is actually create our own database where we will store our measurements. And again, measurements is just another name for tables. Since InfluxDB is a time series database, they like to call them measurements and not tables. So I'm going to go create database DevOps journey. And now when I go show databases, you can see that I have a database right there. If I want to use the database, which means connect to it essentially, I just go use DevOps Journey. And it says using database DevOps Journey. Now that I'm connected to my database, the next thing I'm interested in is the measurements within that database. So by default, there should be no measurements. And I can confirm that by going show measurements. So right now, our database doesn't contain any measurements. Usually measurements would come in from an agent or a client. For example, you could get the telegraph agent, which can gather information about a server, the CPU and everything like that, and then push it over to InfluxDB. I've also made Python scripts where you can take data from Python and push it into InfluxDB. That's usually where your measurements come from, but it's always good to be able to create them yourself just by using the Influx client. So let's go ahead and do that now. It's very simple. All you need to do is insert and then we'll give the measurement a name. So we'll say CPU host equals node one. And we'll say value equals 10. Now when I do show measurements, you can see that it contains the measurement of CPU. All right, now that we have a measurement of CPU created, let's go ahead and select everything from that measurement. So we'll go select star from CPU. And then we can see node one had the value of 10 for CPU, and this was the time that the data was inserted. So as I mentioned before, InfluxDB is a time series database, so there's always going to be a time field for all your measurements. Now usually when data is pushed over to InfluxDB, it will contain a timestamp within that data itself. But if it doesn't, then InfluxDB will automatically put that timestamp in when it received the data. So if you have historical data that already has timestamps in it, then that timestamp is going to come over. So now that we have the measurement created, let's go ahead and just remove it. And the way to do that is with the drop command. So I'll go drop measurement CPU. 
And now when I go show measurements, we no longer have measurements. Okay, so we created some measurements and then we dropped the measurements. Let's go ahead and recreate the measurements. I'm going to copy and paste this in here and you can see that it's very similar to how we did it before except for now I'm doing it for three different servers here and I have different values. So I'll paste that in and now when I go select star from CPU you can see all the values. Now another way to view this data is to go show series. And this is going to show you all the time series data within InfluxDB. And one thing you'll notice here, it says the key name and then it has this. And these are what are called tags in InfluxDB. So our first entry here has the host tag of node 1, the next one is tagged as node 2 and node 3. And this is very important when it comes to filtering. So if I wanted to see all the values of just node 2, for example, I would go select star from CPU where host equals node 2. And when I do that, it returns only the values for node 2. Now, another common thing that you will do when you're selecting data from a time series database is to select it based on a time range. And all you need to do to that is add a clause at the end. So I'll go time is greater than or equal to now minus 5m. And it's going to return everything that happened in the last five minutes. All right, so all this data was created within less than five minutes, but what if I change this to less than one minute? And you can see that there's been no new data for the past one minute, so nothing's displayed. So I hope this video was helpful. It was my goal just to show you the basics of InfluxDB and how easy it is to bring it up, create a database, and create some measurements. If you found the video helpful at all, please smash that like button for me. And if you're interested in learning more about DevOps and automation, go ahead and check out the other videos on my channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.